when examining the case of Missy Beavers and looking at the theory that she was killed by a professional hitman or hit woman or assassin, if you will, some things really need to be looked at. One of the most important ones is a lot of the people that were very close to her have provided airtight alibis. They can prove where they were, they can prove their location, their whereabouts, what they were doing. This is done through receipts, eyewitnesses. So that's another thing that really just did not initiate any sort of spark with any of the people that mentioned in her inner circle. Awkward behavior is not enough. I mean, some people have been talking about that when you see the interviews with the family members. They're trying to judge their behavior, their voice patterns, their mannerisms. That's not enough. Being weird is not a crime, so I always try to stay away from that, whether you don't like someone's behavior or not, and it looks kind of iffy, and that's just not a pathway that I would like to go down. What I think is much more fascinating to explore with these true crime stories is either hard evidence or lack thereof. And some of the possibilities as to why the person might not have been caught yet are not only is this possibly a professional hit job, but this person is someone that Missy Beavers knew who was a little farther outside of her inner circle than the police believe, and they just haven't examined them yet. This is just someone who is not as connected. Well, this person is very connected to her, but the police underestimate how connected he or she is. They've just completely overlooked someone who had a very large quarrel with her. And that's a very big possibility. The other one is that she actually did encounter a real burglary. Um, if it was a real burglary, I would still stand that this is the work of a very sort of seasoned professional, if you will. All the awkward behavior, all the sort of movements that are meant to distract the security cameras, doing the just unthinkable, like the sort of senseless behavior of poking heads in doors and not going in the room, very awkward glances at places like, oh, wow, look, a doorway. I've never seen that before. And not to mention just the random pacing down the hallway. And again, there is that white box that is th that the um, alleged perpetrator is holding, which we can't quite make out. At first, I thought that um, one of my first instincts with the white box was that's actually a knife that there's a knife inside that box, and that was the actual murder weapon that was used on Missy Beavers, um, only for the sake that they were talking about puncture wounds, and the hammer that I witnessed in, when looking at the footage really appeared to be almost sort of like what you would describe as a mini sledgehammer, the sort of mallet type one, but other people have been looking at that a lot more closely and they're saying, no, there is a claw on that. It's a very, very strong, heavy hammer, but it is a claw hammer. However, my first glance didn't really see that, however. Um, as far as the th thought, is this a man or a woman? I don't really have any comment on that right now because when talking about whether or not this was a professional hit job, it could be a hit man or a hit woman and that's sort of not really relevant to this discussion. Now, somebody pulls into the parking lot, driving a silver Nissan Ultima at roughly three o'clock in the morning on the night that she was killed. Very abnormal behavior, turning off their lights as soon as they enter the parking lot, meaning that this car probably did not want to be noticed. And um, I've heard the theory, though, that they do think this might have just been a drunk driver trying to um, avoid the police or just doing, you know, abnormal behavior. But while that is possible, doesn't that just seem like sort of an enormous coincidence that that driver was just sort of just happened to be 300 yards from where a murder was taking place um, one hour later or where a major breaking and entering was taking place 30 minutes later? And keep in mind, this is a town that does not report a lot of murders. And um, in one of the 
press conference interviews, they were stating that this was the first murder in at least three years, if not four years. So this is something that is very new to the town, even though it's possible that these statistics are just not as well reported as we would believe. The other thing that we want to examine is how many people are in that silver Nissan Altima. The theory that I would like to propose now is there are two people. One person is the driver and one person is the one in the police uniform. I think they are both professionals and they have been hired by someone who had a problem with Missy Beavers and wanted to take her out. The car drives into the parking lot of the sporting goods store at approximately 3 o'clock. And if I not get any of this timeline stuff wrong, I'm open to correction. 3 o'clock in the morning, they drive into the parking lot. They do a little driving in a circle. They're waiting to see if the police are going to show up near the church because there's a broken window. They go in reverse, and then they drive back toward the church, cut their lights off. They let the person in the police uniform out of the car. Then that person goes into the church, does the whole walkabout, does the whole walk around, poking their head in the doors, all the stuff that we see on the video. This person is now waiting for Missy Beavers to arrive. Missy Beavers arrives at approximately 4 a.m. And it really supports the theory that because she's killed very closely to the entrance of the door. This would tell me that that person just, as soon as she's in, probably doesn't even say a word, just approaches her, hits her with the hammer, and maybe stabs her with a knife if what I think is correct, and that what is in the box is actually sort of a very, very sort of thin-bladed, kind of like a fillet knife. They stab her with a knife, or in short, murder Missy Beavers, gives either some signal or some time frame has passed, and the silver Nissan Ultima returns, keep in mind it's still pitch dark out, and no one else is expected to arrive. The silver Ultima returns, picks up the person in the SWAT team uniform, and they just disappear into the night, never to be seen from again. I have said this so many times, I'm starting to sound like a broken record. However, I just can't believe that an amateur killer would be able to execute a murder with either blunt force trauma or major puncture wounds without leaving some sort of enormous trail of evidence. Even Leopold and Loeb got caught because of a pair of glasses that fell. So. It really feels like either this person got extremely lucky with something, maybe the police botched some part of the investigation, or perhaps this is a professional hit job, and that could be, there's too little information to say who would be behind that, because as, ma as previously mentioned, Missy did seem to have, she sort of seemed to have ongoing relationships with people via text message. And that is sort of, you know, what I guess you call the emotional affair. And that, appar that part appar appears to be documented. And that enough alone is definitely a motive for someone to want to have her murdered. I mean, the world's a crazy place. Does this mean that it was a professional hit job? Well, that's probably going to be much more, much more concealed. It, that is going to be hidden in a way that... Someone who's a professional is definitely going to be good at covering their tracks. And if you think that this theory is beyond belief, it's not. Someone just has to know somebody. Just any single personal connection could do this. They could just sort of be like, if somebody knows the right person, they could have it done. And it just happened to be that the person who had a major problem with Missy Beavers knew somebody who could make her disappear without getting caught. Why hasn't the suit been found? Why hasn't any purchasing information related to the suit been found? Why hasn't the Silver Ultima been found? How did this person know how to cover their tracks so easily? How did they do this with such little planning time? All these questions do not really seem to have answers, no matter 
who it is unless it was a professional hit or as previously mentioned she interrupted a professional burglary but if it's a burglar what are they stealing what are they stealing it's like one theory was they were looking for a specific kind of electronic equipment and I think that actually comes from her father-in-law however none of that appeared to have been taken and if they were looking for a very specific item why roam the halls for 30 minutes looking for it so again this is pretty much going to come to the end of the video but the end of the podcast if Missy Beavers had been killed by an amateur I just think there would be more evidence left behind and the last thing to say is this looks like a job that was done too thoroughly and too cleanly to have been anything other than a professional hit job. It was most likely arranged by someone who was very close to her and had a problem with her. And that short is the synopsis. It could have been anyone, can't really specify who with such little information going on. And it is a major tragedy. And hopefully the perpetrator will be brought to justice one day and there will be some closure brought to the story. Again, one of the most perplexing and most bizarre true crime mysteries that really just does not give you one of the definite feelings in any direction. And it wasn't until really in putting a lot of thought into it that I thought, this is probably not the work of an amateur then if they're so good at trying to destroy all the leads. It's very possible that Missy Beavers was killed by a professional assassin.